Hello everyone. Um, thank you for attending Sanjun Lee's PhD dissertation defense presentation. Um, my name is Byung Chung Min. I'm associate professor in CIT and I'm chairing Sanjun's PhD committee and also his main advisor. Um, today is my great pleasure and honor to introduce Sang Jun for his PhD dissertation defense presentation. Um, Sang Jun obtained his bachelor degree with cum laude in aerospace engineering at Sejong University in South Korea, and his master degree in aeronautics and um, astronautics engineering from Purdue University. Um, his master thesis was about real-time indoor navigation for autonomous UAV flight. After that, um, Sang Jun entered my research lab and started working with me since 2015. So um, he is one of a few founding members of my research lab, and we spend all the time <clears throat> uh, together. In fact, Sang Jun made our lab logo, you can see from the right bottom uh, the, on his slide, and I'm always grateful to him for making <laughs> such a nice logo. Um, in, his first, um, in his first PhD year, he prepared to apply for fellowship for the rest of his PhD program. And as a result, um, he received fellowship support from National Institute of Justice. This fellowship meant a lot to Sang Jun as well as Purdue University. Um, that's because not only that fellowship was a prestigious nationally recognized fellowship, but also he was the first polytechnic student and only the third student from Purdue to win it. Even more, um, as far as I know, that was the first time the NIJ identified a physical entity such as autonomous vehicles and robots to represent cybersecurity risk and deem the situation public safety issue. Uh, with the cybersecurity st struggling to keep pace with the increase in cyber threat, attack detections and countermeasure in cyber physical system has become more important problems. When it comes to multi-robot systems, um, as you may know, there's always possibility of compromising either an agent in the network or their communication link by malicious attackers. Sanjun Works takes a novel approach to the problem of a cyber attacks on multi-robot systems, including autonomous vehicles. I've been always pleased to see Sanjun's work as he really wants to solve these critical and real-world problems through practical and theoretical approaches. Today, uh, we'll be able to hear more about his researches. Um, please welcome Sang Jun. All right, thank you, Dr. Min, for great introduction of me. So good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to my uh, dissertation presentation. Uh, this is Sang Jun. I'm a PhD student from the Department of CIT at Purdue University. Today, uh, I would like to present uh, my dissertation work that I have been working on last six years. Um, before getting started, I would like to thank everyone who's listening and special thank you to my research advisor, Dr. Min, and my committee members, Dr. Ditch, Dr. Sun, and Dr. Sundaram, who have been constantly supporting me throughout my PhD. So a uh, little bit about me, myself. Uh, I studied aerospace engineering in my undergrad, and I realized that I, it was time for me to expand my skills and knowledge about control engineering. So I pursued a, a master's in aeronautics and astronautics engineering at Purdue. I complete in 2015 and started working with Dr. Min soon afterwards as a PhD student. Uh, in my second year PhD, as Dr. Min mentioned, we received a uh, NIJ research fellowship for three years. And here I'm presenting my work today. Uh, these are the list of my publications during PhD. Uh, I had a couple of chances to go uh, biggest conferences in robotics. I have uh, published two journal articles as a co-author and two articles under review as a first author. This presentation, pre presentation is basically based on all of this work. Okay, back to my uh, main presentation now. The title is uh, Secure Multi-Robot Systems, Threat Identification and Countermeasure Development. As the title says, this Present presentation has two parts with specific goals in order to achieve secure multi robot systems. Part one is about threat identification, which was mostly present in uh, my proposal. And the following part 
two is about countermeasure development, which I have been working on since the proposal. Uh, I will briefly review the first part since it was already covered during uh, my proposal, and I will mainly focus on the second part. So uh, let me give you a quick introduction of what multi-robot systems, MRA in short, is. Uh, first of all, there are uh, various terms that are used to refer the MRS, such as robot teams, robot swarms, and robot networks. So uh, generally speaking, if we have robots that are somehow connected and somehow interested in working with each other, we would call it multi-robot systems. So MRS have been widely used in commercial, civil, and military applica application due to its benefits of robustness and resilience. For example, a team of robots go and pick up an item to help people. Multiple ground robots patrol together to monitor a certain area. And hundreds of drones maintain relative distance each other and perform a New Year ceremony. So the quick question of using MRS is how do we actually uh, facilitate coordination, cooperation, and collaboration? But uh, behind of these benefits, there is a new challenge that we needed to think about, uh, cybersecurity. MRS are vulnerable to a cyber threat since typical application of MRS exchange a huge amount of data between sensors, actuators, controllers, and networks through cyberspace and this provides possible uh, security breaches to intruders. As this illustration shows, MRS are commonly operated through supervisory control called Robot, Robot, Robot Operating System, ROS, which is an open source framework that is fully accessible to unauthorized users. This means that if the control center is compromised, then the intruder would get full access of all agents operated by the control center. Also, MRS suffer from specific vulnerabilities that uh, traditional security solutions are unable to fully address. So these are the reason why we need to we, why we need the proper techniques capable of securing MRS against cyber threats. So uh, what we are dealing in this study is cyber attack or simply attack. That is an action which undermines the security of robotic systems for malicious purpose. The general aim of attack is to disable or malfunction systems, system components such as uh, controllers, actuators, sensors, and networks at any layer. So several studies in different area have warned this, this issue is not a futuristic vision anymore. It has been widely spread in our, our life. For example, there are uh, various types of attack that and they have been actively investigated in research st studies. Also, the US government issued a uh, public announcement warning the general public about cybersecurity. This illustration shows the uh, impact of GPS spoofing attack on uh, autonomous vehicle on, on the highway. The intruder jams genuine GPS signals of the target in red and send fake signals to make it off the desired path. We might simply say the vehicle is moving wrong way because we can see the global view, but the problem is the vehicle itself has no idea where it's heading now since it is still believed that the corrupted GPS data by the intruder is the new. This risk could lead to worst case scenarios such as severe traffic accidents or fatalities. So uh, let's have a look at a couple of more examples. A research group at Purdue uh, designed a, a security, security framework for UAVs called Blue Box that is uh, capable of detecting and handling a variety of cyber attacks. In this demo, they launched sensor and controller attack, attacks on a drone by embedding, embedding a malicious code in the onboard software. The first attack is targeting angle sensor measurement while the drone staying its hovering position. So when the sensor attack was activated, the drone with the, without the blue box immediately lost its stability, become out of control and crashed. However, in case of a blue box was on, the blue box took over the control of the vehicle and recovered the stability. In a similar way, the controller attack modified the control gains, resulting the vehicle to shake. 
but uh, if the blue box was on, the blue box mitigate the impact of the controller attack by taking over the control of drone as soon as the attack was detected. This research is very interesting and the results demonstrate the effectiveness of the proposed solution very well, but it might not be directly applicable to multi role systems. Another example, a research group at University of Cambridge designed a miniature robotic car testbed and they demonstrate how the cooperative, cooperative driving could improve the uh, traffic efficiency. The key idea of cooperative driving is that vehicles within visibility range, range communicate with one another to share intended maneuvers before actually executing them. So this allows the vehicles to cooperate about lane changing decisions and plan efficient paths that maximize the traffic throughput, ensuring safety. In this demo, they first tested on non-cooperative driving with a vehicle stop in the middle of the road and they and then they implement the proposed cooperative driving strategy in the same setup. Uh, there was a vehicle stopped moving, possibly due to attack or fault, and other vehicle tried to, to change the lane to avoid it. Since the vehicle did not share any information with each other, a long traffic line was formed, degrading tra traffic throughput. As you can see, they try to, to change the lane, but uh, in the same situation, if the vehicle could share the, their intended maneuver before actually executing them, they were able to quickly pass the stop the car because each vehicle could predict where its neighbor moved to. This research also very uh, interesting and sounds very uh, feasible, but it would be better if we could recover the stopped car instead of leaving where it stopped. So uh, even though many studies have present strategy and solutions for threat identification and countermeasure development, there are still shortcomings which still need to be addressed. First, most of current approaches mainly focus on handling a fault in cooperative control, which cannot fully address cyber threat in MRS. Second, traditional security solutions include encryption and authentication do not consider the dynamics and specific constraints of MRS, such as limited computational resource. Lastly, some studies validate their, uh, their approaches by theoretical analysis rather than empirical analysis reusing real robots. With the consideration of these limitations, we set the main goal of this disserta dissertation to make uh, security in MRS less onerous while providing more effective defenses. The dissertation seeks to um, improve existing technologies and practice to develop secure systems while at the same time discover and apply innovations. Specifically, I have come up with the following two objectives threat identification and countermeasure development. Threat identification is an approach in which the robotic system is continuously monitors for anomalies caused by adversary actions, and countermeasure development is a strategy to adapt to the abnormal situation so that the overall system continues to satisfy its goal, thus mitigating the impact of the attack. These research uh, objectives will be achieved by uh, theoretical, methodological, and, and experiment, exper experimental approaches. So uh, each research objective includes uh, specific sub-goals, and the basic concept is illustrated here. So part one, threat identification, will be achieved by uh, designing an attack diagonal system. This subsystem will determine the possible uh, ex existence of attack using statistical approaches and ident identify target, time, and type of attack if there exists any. Then this knowledge of attack provided by the part one will be handed over to the second part, countermeasure development. An attack resilient control subsystem will first evaluate the magnitude of attack and then determine whether to adapt to the abnormal situation or not. This, this decision will implement controller reconfiguration and finally 
generate new secure control command so that the overall system continues to satisfy its goals. So the major contributions of, of the dissertation are summarized as follows. We address the prelimi preliminaries of securing MRS covering key aspects such as definition of attacks and its impact, design requirement, and evaluation metric. We first propose a distributed attack detection method that is high sensi sensitivity to attacks and a robust anticipation of model uncertainties. Then attack resilient control algorithm are designed to uh, maintain desirable performance in the presence of, of identified attack. Finally, all methodology, uh, methodologies present are validated by relevant simulation and experiment. Um, as a first step toward the research goals in this section, we start with a technique for detecting a single attack in a single robot and it is extended to detection of multi multiple attacks in multi robot systems. The material in this section is based on the following uh, previously published papers. So uh, we apply a model based approach to design an attack detection system. The main advantage of using model based based approach is that it enables dynamic systems such as ground vehicle and drones or linear linear and nonlinear system in the real world to be modeled in the in state space representation. These models uh, with stochastic process provide a prediction of the dynamic behavior of, of the systems in normal condition. Then this prediction is used to uh, determine how much the act actual state far away from the expected one. In practice, uh, this decision can be made based on the st statistical properties like a sample, uh, like a mean and variance. So using model-based approach, we uh, propose an attack detection system capable of identifying attack at sensor layer in real time. Uh, this is a schematic overview showing the key features of the proposed detection method. First, we assume that an attack is injected through one of the sensors and this signal, which possibly corrupted by attack, are investigated by the attack diagonal subsystem. By evaluating the residual, uh, which is the difference between the predicted output and actual output, on attack can be detected. A uh, statistical testing performs a logical process if an inequality condition with respect to threshold is satisfied or violate. And in practice, this threshold can be determined by using the mean of moving window. So uh, as a direct application case study, uh, we apply the proposed method to a single attack in a single vehicle. In this demo, there are three vehicles. Uh, from the left to the right, the vehicle with the proposed detector equipped, the vehicle with attack-free, and the vehicle without the detector. We assume that position sensor attack was on the first and third vehicles and see if the detector was able to identify the attack. The attack-free uh, vehicle in the middle follow the desired path as expected, so let's take a look at the vehicles under attacks. The first vehicle on the left side, it was able to detect uh, a malicious activities using the detector and stopped for safety. But vehicle on the right side, as soon as the attack was activated, it unexpectedly uh, changed its heading to track the corrupted signals and kept moving even if it, dri it driving over the center line. So uh, here we could see a suspicious jump in the estimation error plot, but it is insufficient to determine that there was an attack in the vehicle because an attack is not the only cause of a peak during state estimation. For example, it can be caused by a signal attenuation, data loss, time delay, packet droppings, and so on. But uh, in the right-hand plot, an attack was disclosed when the inequality condition was violated, which means that the residual were uh, greater than the uh, threshold boundaries that calculate by using the mean and variance of the first 100 samples. 
So in this case study, uh, we verify that the proposed detector was able to disclose an attack in a vehicle. So now uh, we apply the detection method to the case of multiple attacks on multiple robots to see if the if the solution would be able to detect multi multiple attacks at the same time. We extended the previous single version of detector by adding direction of arrival feature that enable, enabled each robot to estimate its neighbor's bearing angle. This new information was used to uh, determine the possible existence of attack in a distributed manner. In this demo, there was a team of 10 robots trying to, to reach the goal position in white box. The uh, three of them were randomly selected, uh, robot three, seven, and 10 in this case, and attacked at seven seconds. The trajectory tracking plot on the, on the top right corner was generated by the actual position sensor reading of the rich robot and the residual of robot three was monitored in real time and it is given on the bottom right corner. Uh, the team started traveling towards the goal position and a few seconds later, the attack was on robot three, seven, and 10. The compromised robot were clearly break apart from the team and failed to reach the goal position while other did. An interesting thing about uh, their trajectory was that the position sensor reading of the robots on the attack indicate they uh, track their desired path well, even though they significantly deviate from it, it in fact. This, this was mainly because the robot was unable to disclose the attack solely on itself so that the robot under attack still believed they were in right track. However, the robot three detector, detector identified the attack when the residual violate the threshold boundary. The evolution of residual of each robot is provided here. So uh, there are there were a significant jump, significant change detected in robot three, seven, and ten that causes causes the residual residual to jump the upper bound of the threshold around the ten seconds. On the other hand, uh, there was no attack alarm for the rest of the robots. Thus. Uh, the proposed detection scheme identified the multiple attacks in the multiple robots. So in this case study, uh, we verified that the proposed uh, direction of arrival estimation added attack detection method was able to identify multiple attacks on multiple robots. In this section, uh, we propose a uh, threat identification method capable of identifying malicious activities in MRS, and the proposed method was validated using both simulation and real robot experiment. So the validations of the effectiveness of the attack detection techniques for both single robot and multiple robots leads us to the next step, uh, countermeasure development which is the second part of uh, this presentation. So in this section, I will talk about the secure uh, consensus control of uh, multi-robot systems in the presence of attack. The material in this section is partially based on the following papers. So uh, in the area of MRS, uh, consensus in an important and fundamental problem, which is closely related to formation control, blocking, uh, distribute estimation and so on. So the aim is simply to reach agreement through a distributed manner. This means that a team of robots reach an agreement on a common value by interacting with each other via uh, local interactions. So when multiple robots agree on a certain state, like a gold box in this example, they are said to have reached consensus. On the other hand, they are said to have failed to reach consensus due to attack. So uh, the presence of attack makes a consensus in MRS become more, much more challenging because the communication bandwidth and connectivity, connectivity of uh, the team are often limited or unreliable due to attacks. Sometimes abbreviation between team goals and individual goals is required for uh, a better performance. And uh, finally, the computational resources of each individual robot are always limited. 
So the general goal or general goal is to design a consensus protocol that guarantees that a team of the robot that execute the execute the consensus protocol will eventually converge upon agreement. In normal condition, without attack in the simula in this simulation, 20 number of robots reach the consensus as they uh, as their uh, relative distance converges to zero at the end of the simulation. Like I mentioned, MRS is highly uh, vulnerable to security attack and achieving consensus in the presence of attack is a challenging task. For example, in this demo, there are two groups of robots trying to, to reach consensus. The robot team on the left side is attack free and the, and the other team on the right side has three robots under attack. While the attack free team achieved consensus as they converged to a common point, common position, the team under attack failed to reach consensus due to the attack. One of the compromised robots on the bottom left corner hit the boundary and the test was stopped for safety. Thus, in order to uh, reach consensus in the presence of attack, uh, the main goal in this section is to design secure control strategies of MRS that can counteract the impact of attack. Uh, there have been uh, notable studies to resolve this issue, and I'm going to briefly review two of those. On attack, uh, resilient formation control was developed in the presence of a malicious robot in 2017, and it proposed robust net network topologies, topologies that guarantee resilient consensus. However, uh, this approach required some uh, global observation, which is still possibly vulnerable to uh, security attacks, and only numerical simulation was present. In the second study, uh, cooperative control strategies, strategies using two-stage Kerman filter were uh, investigated in the presence of actual, actual fault. But there was a limitation that this approach made to be uh, un unable to apply to our case because it was designed to handle uh, actual fault instead of attack. So uh, with the consideration of current limitation, the contribution of this study over related approaches are summarized as follows. We use a recursive Bayesian estimation to disclose two widespread attack types, deception attack and denial of service attack. Then, two corresponding secure control protocols are developed to meet the performance requirements in the presence of attacks. The proposed approaches are designed in a fully dis distributed manner and validate using the both uh, numerical simulations and real robot experiments. So uh, this is an overview showing the key feature of the proposed solution, and it comprises <coughs> two subsystems the threat identification subsystem and the countermeasure subsystem. The threat ident identification subsystem incorporates the attack detection process presented in the previous section, and the countermeasure consists of a two secure con consensus protocol co corresponding to the two types of attacks, respectively. We assume that deception attack aims to compromise the integrity of sensor measurement and denial of service attack aims to compromise the availability of resources such as control packets. In this way, uh, the proposed solution will enable MRS to reach consensus in the presence of attacks. So uh, we consider n number of homogeneous robots where the dynamics of each robot is represented as the following discrete time linear system with state input and output factors. So, and we assume that uh, an intruder will be capable of, of compromising a robot using one of the two attack types in an independent and non-collusive manner, which means that two different types of attack cannot be occurred at the same time. Thus, each attack will cause deviations resulting the actual output to deviate from the predicted output. This insight leads us to formulate the definition as follows. The uh, IFT robot is said to be under type one deception attack if there is no impact caused by uh, uh, denial of service attack 
and the ice robot is say to be under type 2 DOS attack if there is no impact caused by deception attack. So uh, based on these, based on the definitions, we can calculate the following quantity for each attack time. The main idea behind this approach is to compare the cumulative sum of output error with the corresponding covariance matrix of the residual vector predicted by the Kalman filter over a rolling window with the finite length t. If the intruder uh, injects an arbitrary random sequence to the sensor measurement, this will corrupt the estimated state at the attack time, and the attack will be disclosed when it violates the threshold uh, condition. The overall attack detection algorithm is given here. The algorithm identifies each type of attack and activate the corresponding protocol for countermeasure in the following slide. So uh, in order to uh, counteract the type 1 attack, a secure consensus protocol is designed using distributed uh, weighted bearing controller. The main idea of this protocol is to assign the compromised robot to have less weight than the others in the network like a magnet. For example, if this protocol is activated, the compromised robots are forced to ignore their sense readings and they are attracted to the attack-free robots that have more weight. And finally, they are able to reach consensus. Uh, so in this slide, I will briefly review the uh, convergence analysis of the protocol one. We consider the sum of relative distance between all its neighbors as a life of con candidate to show that the protocol will converge it to a desired state as time goes to infinity. Showing the derivative of life node function will be zero only when the velocity is zero for all robots in the network. This completes the convergence proof. On the other hand, if the detection algorithm identified, identi identified an attack as a type 2 attack, a distributed leader and follower controller is applied to counteract the attack. Unlike the type 1 attack, the sensor reading is still available, but there is a potential delay due to the DOS attack. This makes the protocol 1 infeasible to counteract the type 2 attack. So we need new uh, protocol. So in the, in the protocol 2, the uh, attack-free robots transmit the virtual output, which is free from the attack, to the uh, compromised robot. This strategy enables the compromised robot to transform into followers while the uh, attack-free robots are assigned as leaders, finally reaching consensus. Similar to the convergence analysis of the protocol one, we consider the tracking error between the leaders and followers. By showing there exists a Q greater than zero that satisfies the following inequality condition, we can verify the tracking error will asymptotically converge to zero with the assumption that each follower has at least one leader connected. This completes the convergence proof, and I will talk about how this assumption affects the, affect the performance in later simulation. Now, uh, we validate the proposed secure consensus controls using a team of A robots. In this scenario, each robot started traveling to reach consensus at common point, and type 1, type 2 attacks were injected into four random robots, 2, 4, 6, and 8 in this case, from uh, 3 to 6 seconds and 9 to 12 seconds, respectively. We say the team achieved the consensus if the relative distance each other is equal or less than 0.4 meters. This is the minimum safe distance they could get close each other to avoid any possible collision. The uh, top right corner plot uh, shows the uh, evolution of test statistics of, for each robot. The middle plot shows the implementation of secure protocols and the bottom uh, plot shows the relative distance. So um, a few seconds later, each robot uh, started traveling toward the goal. The protocol one was activated as soon as the type one attack was identified by the detector in the plot on the right, top right, top right. 
A few seconds later, the type 2 attack was detected and the corresponding protocol, the protocol 2, was activated to counteract the DOS attack. Finally, uh, the relative distance each other converges to the desired value. Then we say the team reached consensus in the presence of attack. These are the detailed look of the test result. Uh, in the trajectory plot on the top right, we could see that each type of, type of attack impact the robot 2, 4, 6, and 8, where they change their heading unexpectedly. Each secure protocol was activated to uh, counteract the corresponding type of attack, and the team of robots reached consensus as they uh, converged to the desired positions. So uh, in the previous experiment, uh, we verified the effectiveness of the proposed secure uh, protocol with eight robots. However, there were some limitations implementing, implementing the robots in this testbed. Uh, the maximum the number of robots was limited to 20, and we were not a, we are not allowed to override the collision avoidance algorithm due to uh, safety requirement. So we performed extensive simulations with uh, 16 and 24 robots to see how the secure consensus control effectively handled the attack. In this simulation, uh, the robot had random initial condition and the simulation continued until all robots achieved consensus or the maximum iteration was reached. For the attack profile, one of the one of two attack types was randomly considered. So uh, as can be seen, the team uh, reached consensus for the most of the cases, even if majority, uh, majority number of team was compromised. For example, 12 of 16 robots were compromised by type 1 attack, but the team reached consensus. In a similar way, 18 of 24 robots were uh, attacked by the type 1 attack, and the protocol 1 uh, counteracted the attack, reaching consensus. Uh, but um, there was a few cases that the team failed to achieve consensus when the connectivity assumption was violated. For example, in the plot on the right side, the team was separated to two groups since they lost the connection to each other. This means that the connection assumption that requires each follower to have at least one leader was violated due to the attack. But as long as the connectivity assumption was held, the proposed secure protocols achieved consensus. So uh, this section has presented a secure control strategies that ensure multi-robot consensus in the presence of multiple compromised robots. The main idea was to design secure protocol strategies con counteracting two widespread attack types using a weighted uh, bearing controller and leader follower control strategies. The performance was uh, evaluated in both simulation and experiment and the proposed method enabled a team of robots to achieve consensus, even for the cases where the majority of robots were attacked. Now, uh, we are going to talk about a uh, distributed attack resilient vehicle platooning framework as the final application case study of this, of this dissertation. The material in this section is partially based on the following papers. So uh, vehicle platooning is an important autonomous driving method that allows a group of vehicles to travel together in a safe and efficient manner. This is a potentially so efficient that it saves on fuel, reduces uh, pollution and helps control traffic flow. And an obvious benefit is that it prevents accidents caused by human error like a driver fatigue. However, the communication channel that enables each vehicle to exchange driving data among vehicles is inherently vulnerable to cyber attack. To explain more generally, uh, these vehicles communicate each other and maintain inner vehicle distance and relative speed. Thus, there are two control objectives to achieve, speed control and distance control. For example, in case of second followers vehicles, FOV2, in N platoon, the goal of the speed control is to track the speed of the vehicle ahead, which is FV1, the FV2 keeps traveling at this speed as long as it maintains the safe distance D. So uh, if the actual distance between the 
FV1 and FV2 is smaller than the safe distance D, the distance control is active to meet the safe distance again. In this way, a group of uh, vehicles can uh, travel together while maintaining distance and speed. So uh, vehicle platforming is uh, highly susceptible to security attack and it can lead to catastrophic load collisions and string instability in traffic, causing severe degradation in the efficiency. For example, there are two groups of six vehicles traveling a straight road one without attack and uh, the other with an attack at the th third vehicles. An intruder sent corrupted signal causing the third vehicle to overspeed while other vehicles travel at a constant speed. As can be seen in simulation, the third vehicle bumped into the second vehicle and the uh, overall platoon failed. So two research questions naturally arose here. So what and when makes the platoon unstable and can the platoon recover itself? So to seek the answer to these questions in this research, um, we propose an attack resilient control scheme that continuously monitors for anomalies caused by adversary actions and adapt to abnormal situations so that overall system continues to satisfy its goal, thus mitigating the impact of attacks. Several studies address the possible solution to resolve the security issues in connected vehicles. For example, a uh, distributed secure platoon control against DOS attack was investigated in 2020. They proposed a uh, switch time delay system model that uh, captures the time varying sampling and the DOS attack simultaneously, but it was hard to validate using real models. Another study, a uh, decentralized diagnosis algorithm was uh, proposed to detect the re reply attack with some limitations like uh, some parameters required fine tuning to detect the attack properly. So to overcome current shortcomings, we propose a uh, mix of non-parametric corner-based prob probabilistic process and recursive Bayesian estimation that effectively detect, identify three prevalent types of attack. Then uh, we propose an attack resilient nonlinear model predictive control that secures vehicle platforming while satisfying the performance re requirements in a fully distributed manner. Finally, the attack resident control is valid on a custom simulation. So this is an overview showing the key features of the proposed method that comprise two components, namely the attack detection subsystem and the attack resident control subsystem. The attack detection systems use a mix of known parametric method uh, Gaussian process and the parametric method on scanted common filter and then the and then the attack resilient control system is designed based on nonlinear model predictive control where each vehicle solve its op optimization problem in this way the proposed solution provide real time resiliency against a comprehensive set of attacks including spoofing message falsification and denial or denier of service attacks so we consider a uh, homogene homogeneous platoon cons consisting of a leader vehicle and n number of uh, follow vehicles. The dynamics of each vehicle can be represented as the following uh, discrete time nonlinear system with with a uh, state vector and output vector. So talking about the attack model, the adversary is assumed to be capable of compromising a vehicle using one of these three attack types. First, uh, we assume that there is an unauthorized intruder who is able to take the control of the ith vehicle and induce a constant offset to its current acceleration command when an attack begins at t delta. Second, an intruder is capable of simultaneously listening sensor readings among vehicles and sending falsified messages to a target vehicle. Specifically, uh, the intruder is able to listen the position sensor reading of ith vehicle and manipulate it by adding delta falsification to each current position. Lastly, an intruder introduced the network to overwhelming uh, fake request. This unexpectedly high network traffic caused packet loss, which disables the network from 
um, responding the resume request sent by the authorized users. This attack blocks the directional communication link between a target vehicle and its neighbors, uh, preventing the JF vehicle from receiving state information of the ith vehicle during the attack period. So the main advantage of using a mix of GP and UKF is that GP regression enables UKF to become independent from the uncertainties of uh, models. The GP regression provides the statistical uh, properties that describe an unknown function from a given set of, set of training data. Uh, therefore, the, uh, the proposed method does not depend on the availability of uh, parametric prediction and measurement models, which are inherently vulnerable to attacks. Thus, the GPUKF integration provides the GP re regression model of the state transition function G with the corresponding covariance Q and the GP regression model of the measurement function H with the corresponding covariance R. The predicted states are then applied to, uh, to the proposed attack detection algorithm. Now, uh, the predicted state and actual sensor measurement are used to compute the residual vector, which captures the deviation as a potential attack. Then, the power of the residual vector, SK, is calculated and applied to statistical testing called chi-square detector. The detector continuously compares the power of the power of the residual with a given threshold, which can be determined from the chi-square table corresponding to the desired co confidence interval and the degree of freedom. Finally, it triggers an alarm if the threshold condition is satisfied or violated due to an attack. It discloses an attack underway if there exists any. So um, if an attack is uh, detected and identified in the previous step, each vehicle starts uh, computing its own optimal control input by minimizing the cost function while satisfying the six constraint. The key of uh, achieving this distributed attack resilient nonlinear model predictive control called DAR and NPC is to satisfy the last two terminal constraints. The first terminal constraint is to enforce the vehicle I under the uh, spoofing attack to have the equivalent output as the average of assumed output. And the second terminal constraint is to uh, enforce the vehicle I under the message falsification attack to travel with a constant speed at the, at the end of the prediction horizon. In practice, uh, this optimization problem can be solved using conjugate gradient method. So by solving it, uh, each vehicles achieve the speed and the distance control objectives in the presence of attack. The cost function of the optimization problem is given as follows. The weight matrix Q represents the level of penalty for the deviation between the predict and desired output R is for the division between the predict, predicted and desired input. F is for the division between the predicted and the assumed output. And G is for the deviation between the predicted output and neighbor's assumed trajectory. Thus, computing uh, an optimal solution that satisfies all this weight matrix enables each vehicle to mitigate the impact of attack. The stability of DAR and NMP can be shown by uh, proving the terminal output of vehicles asymptotically converge to the desired state. The complete proof is available in dissertation. So uh, this is a whole process of the uh, proposed attack resilient control scheme. The GPUKF state estimation in gray block provide the predicted state of each vehicle, its vehicles to attack detection subsystem in blue blocks, where an attack is disclosed. So finally, the DAR and NPC is uh, activated, activated to mitigate the uh, identified attack in light gold blocks. So uh, talking about the validation of the proposed method, so we predict uh, the nonlinear state using the GPUKF state estimation. 
Uh, in first figure, uh, with a set of 100 data, the GPUKF in yellow solid line predict cons consistently the true state in black dotted line. Uh, the gray, the gray, uh, the gray area indicate the drive the uh, drive the standard deviation of the state estimation, and the blue dots show the training data points. In the second figure, uh, the GPUKF performs relatively small estimation error than other filters, extended karma filter and unscanted karma filter alone. In addition, we compute the Mahalanobis distance between the ground truth and the mean of the estimation error for each filter. The results indicate the GPUKF out, outperforms other, v, uh, other filters in terms of, of the estimation error. So based on the uh, GPUKF prediction, the statistical testing is performed and each attack is detected where the residual of the vehicle 3 significantly exceed the threshold while other vehicles follow a similar pattern of uh, Gaussian noise. This can be expected since we assume that the GPUKF models have additive germane Gaussian noise so that um, the evolution of the residual vectors are also Gaussian-like. So uh, in case of the denial of service attack, no significant deviation is observed in the evolution of the uh, residual vector. This is mainly because the uh, denial of service attack sabotages the communication link, which is not measured through the, uh, the GPUKF detection. However, this attack is able to be able to, to, be able to detect it by investigating data exchange conditions. So now uh, we perform extensive simulations using a custom driving environment in MATLAB. We consider a uh, um, platoon consisting of leader vehicle and five follow vehicles. The leader vehicle starts traveling at 25 meters per sec for one second, then it accelerates until reaching 28 meters per sec and keep this speed at the end of the simulation. So each vehicle each follow vehicle also starts traveling to track the leader's desired speed while keeping the uh, desired safe distance each other. We consider three different attack scenarios according to the attack model we previously mentioned. So for the spoofing attack scenario, five acceleration offset begins at the uh, vehicle three, vehicle three at four seconds. As, as can be seen in the lateral view of the platinum, the attack costs causes the third vehicle to accelerate, but the attack resilient control is immediately activated to mitigating the attack, slowing it down to avoid any possible collision. So finally, there is no collision and each vehicle reached the destination safe and sound. The spoofing attack may cause a collision if there was no countermeasure implemented, but the DAR NFPC was immediately activated to mitigate the attack. In the, <clears throat> in the optimization cost plot, uh, there was a significant effort af after the attack generating after the attack to generate new uh, optimal input to adjust the platoon and the cost cost converged to the zero as the platoon becomes stable again. As a result, the DAR and MPC compensate uh, the negative effect of the attack as well as all the vehicles return to the desired speed at the end. The inner vehicle distance for each vehicle shows that the distance between FV2 and FV3 was increased as, as uh, FV3 deaccelerated to avoid any possible collision due to the attack. So at the end, uh, the attack was mitigated by the DAR and NPC and the FVs were able to recover the, their desired safe distance. No collision was guaranteed since there was no vehicle violate, violate the safe distance. Thus, uh, the simulation result validate that the uh, DAR and NPC effectively mitigate the spoofing attack as the speed and position of the vehicles were restored to the desired state shortly after the attack was detected. So in the case of message falsification attack, the intruder sent additive 20 meters of falsified message to the uh, position sensor reading of the third vehicle at four seconds, making it believe that uh, there is only 10 meters apart 
to the Viglo head. This attack causes a sharp decrease in the speed of the third vehicle to avoid any collision expected. However, as soon as the DAR and NPG start generating new control signals, it effectively mitigates the uh, negative effect of the message falsification attack. And all the vehicles keep the desired safe distance and speed at the end. So this attack caused a sharp decrease in the speed of the FV3 to avoid any collision expected. Other, other follow vehicles behind the FV3 also decreased, uh, decreased the speed to keep the desired safe distance each other. Then the DAR and NPG started to generate new control signals to control the inner vehicle, inner, inner distance when the attack was detected. As a result, the speed was uh, decreased first to avoid any collision and the speed was increased again, increased again until the desired speed was met. The inner vehicle distance between FV2 and FV3 was increased as the FV3 decelerated to avoid any possible collision due to the attack and the distance returned to the desired, desired one soon. So more control efforts were required for the FV3 and it, its uh, successors to generate their uh, new optimal control in, input signals that mitigate the attack. So uh, therefore, uh, the DAR and MTC also effectively mitigate the negative effect of the message falsification attack and all the vehicles kept the desired safe distance and speed at the end. So lastly, uh, the denial of service attack prevent uh, the third vehicle from uh, receiving the desired speed and the distance data of the second vehicles. As soon as the attack is disclosed, the third vehicle is forced to make use of the most recent uh, updated data prior to the attack activate. This deceives uh, the third vehicle into accelerating the speed uh, during the attack period, even if, it, even if the safe distance is violated. However, uh, the DAR and NPC mitigate the attack shortly after the attack was rejected and the speed and the inner vehicle distance start returning to its original state. Uh, this attack causes the FV3 to accelerate the speed during the attack period, even if the safe distance was violated, but uh, DAR and NPC mitigate the attack shortly after the attack was rejected. The speed and the inner vehicle distance start returning to its original state and uh, generating a new optimal uh, control input compensating the error required more cost for the FV3 and its successors. The DOS attack was most dangerous attack uh, type since mitigating it required more time and control effort. For example, a near collision between, uh, between the FV2 and FV3 was observed around 9 seconds where the, where the uh, inner, ve inner vehicle distance was less than 50 meters. The, the, the speed and distance controls also needed a couple of more seconds than other attack scenarios to reach the desired state. Uh, nevertheless, the DAR and NPC was able to mitigate the denial of service attack with the desired performance guarantees. So uh, in this study, uh, we developed an attack resilient architecture for vehicle platforming. First, Gaussian process and unscanned common filter based attack detection scan was, was proposed and then an attack resilient controller was present using nonlinear model predictive control approach. Extensive simulation results demonstrate resiliency against three types of attacks. So until now, I have present main work during my PhD, including threat identification and countermeasure development. Let me conclude the presentation. So we started this study to address a new challenge on MRS, cybersecurity. So as a first step toward the research course, we investigated the fundamentals of designing attack, designing attack diagnosis and resilient systems, covering key aspects such as definition of attack and its impact, design requirement, and evaluation metric. Then as a direct application case study, we started with a technique for detecting a single attack in a single robot 
and it was extended to de detection of multiple attacks in a multi-robot systems. Two cases study on multi-robot multi -robot consensus and vehicle flattening were investigated and all methodologies presented in this dissertation were validated by relevant simulation and experiment. Finally, all the suggestions, comments from the proposal also have been addressed. So we also found some limitation or limitation of our approaches. For example, when we picked the threshold for attack detection algorithm, there was an inevitable trade-off between the force alarm rate and the sensitivity of the system against attacks. In particular, a higher threshold result in a low, low, lower force alarm rate while in a less sensitive system to attacks. We handled this issue by tuning the threshold depending on applications, so we were able to find a balance between a sensitivity and force alarm rate. Another issue we were faced is that uh, there was an, another trade-off between the computational cost and performance when we designed a tech-resilient resilient, nonlinear model predict control. If we select more number of prediction horizon for better performance, it required more computational cost, causing delay on solving optimization, optimization problem. This issue was also resolved by finding a balance between the performance and the available resource, depending on applications. In conclusion, this uh, dissertation presents solution to make security in multi-level systems less onerous while providing more effective defenses. So we believe the pr uh, principal outcomes and major findings of this dissertation will provide numerous opportunities that cross traditional disciplinary, disciplinary boundaries. This work was supported by the U.S. Department of Justice. Once again, special thank you to my committee members, Dr. Min, Dr. Deech, Dr. Sun, and Dr. Sundaram, as well as all my dear friends in Smart Lab. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, the, thank you for the presentation, Sangjun. Um, um, I would like to open up the floor for questions uh, from um, general audience. I see that other than committee members and myself and Sangjun, I see that some um, general audiences um, in this meeting. Um, any questions to Sangjun? Okay, then um, thank you for attending um, Sangjun dissertation presentation. So um, committee, so I think um, Sangjun and committee, we can have, um, we, we're gonna have um, close discussions. Um, so, so let me just say uh, thank you.